Ah, uh, I thought it was me. <laughs> okay. Thank you. It's so I'm I'm just sharing some of our reflections on citizen engagement in Singapore, which um, um, and I'm I'll share a few slides about the situation in Singapore today as well, and some of the experiences of the National Library Board in Singapore in promoting citizen engagement together with our government. I I just introduced this. The volume can. Ah. Uh, can you hear me now? All right, great. Sorry. So I shared this slide because um, I I wanted to say that the National Library Board in Singapore um, oversees the public libraries of Singapore as well as the National Library of Singapore and the National Archives of Singapore. I think probably it arises because we're a small country and um, the National Archives of Singapore joined us in 2012 so that we could um, have more horizontal delivery of information services to our citizens as well. And um, under the National, the National Library Board of Singapore as well, we are under the Ministry of Communications and Information. Um, that's a point that I wanted to bring up because our ministry is the one that is responsible for uh, digital infrastructure in our country and also responsible for public communications of government policies. So that puts us together with a ministry that has these responsibilities. Um, just a, a quick slide here that shares what our ministry expects um, to use uh, or leverage on library spaces for. Um, and it's really for uh, the delivery of digital service, uh, services to innovate and adapt. Uh, and libraries become a platform for citizen engagement in many areas in the country as well. And finally, we see our ministry also sees the libraries as community spaces um, where we can promote digital inclusion. This, this slide goes through Singapore's Smart Nation um, initiative. And I think um, this is a um, billion dollar, five to 10 year plan, which is really about putting digital infrastructure into every home. Um, under, under this plan, uh, Wi-Fi, high-speed Wi-Fi has been rolled out to many community spaces, including libraries. For libraries, we've had free Wi-Fi for the last five years. Um, and increasingly, we've had to upgrade that because as some of the speakers shared just now, there it is necessary to cater for videos and to cater for large, um, you know, large, uh, files as well. So the next generation broadband is also rolled out through libraries and many community spaces. And when I say community spaces, these include sports hubs, uh, these include um, transport nodes uh, in our MRTs, our mass rapid uh, rail transports, as well as at bus stops and uh, schools and uh, community clubs for seniors. Um, I think I, I also should share that uh, part of the national vision includes providing a lot of subsidies uh, for digital inclusion and subsidies are given to the less well-off in Singapore as well as to seniors and for all school children. Alongside um, all these technological infrastructure developments, there's been the rolling out of cyber, cyber security, cyber security um, agencies to safeguard cyber security. And cyber wellness has also been huge initiatives alongside this because um, you know, as you provide infrastructure, it's also important to cater for uh, cyber safety. And we've also rolled out a slew of data protection laws um, alongside all these initiatives. So all these things are happening in tandem. And um, as a bit of a background, one of the big um, 
one of the big successes of e-government in Singapore is actually the taxation system in Singapore, where I think we, are, we take great pride in being one of the countries that makes it hugely, in, hugely simple for everybody to pay their taxes. Uh, and it's, I think, one of um, the pride of e-government in Singapore is that taxation has been something that has, is no longer a friction point and no longer a pain point for, for both citizens and companies. Um, it's easy as just a simple click, you know. <laughs> so, now, I, I just want to go through a few quick slides about, um, these are a bit busy, but um, it's really just to share about the rapid increase in, in the use of mobile uh, services in Singapore, as well as the use of eGov services. And um, the parts that I've underlined are really the, the young and the seniors. And these for us are the two big groups of people who have been coming on board uh, mobile usage. Um, and mind you, I say mobile usage because later I have some slides on uh, computer usage. And really, although the computer usage slides show that it's high, um, I wasn't able to get our latest slides on computer usage, which actually shows that the use of computers in Singapore is declining rapidly. Uh, sales are dropping dramatically, and uh, people are moving from desktops and computers into mobile platforms. And those include mobile phones, phablets, and, uh, and tablets. So um, the takeaway for us, um, really as a government, and when we design e-government services, is that many things have to be designed from the beginning for a mobile platform. And a mobile platform, you know, quite different also from, from web services in that it needs to be short, bite-sized, and succinct. Um, and, and that's been a big learning point for us. Um, the second thing on that I want, the second point that I wanted to make on this slide is that we did our latest uh, public satisfaction survey on government services recently, and it showed that public satisfaction with the government is increasingly being determined by public satisfaction with government's online services. So that that. Online government services as a factor has been growing tremendously in defining the, public, the citizens' satisfaction with government. So if I move on to this slide, it's just to, to highlight um, the habits of Singaporeans. Our citizens, we find uh, on, on the internet 30 hours a week. Sorry, I should just back up to say that like, Singapore, like New Zealand, Singapore is a small country. Um, we have about 5.3 million people, and 5.3 million people squashed into a land mass that's probably not much bigger than a New Zealand city. So in that sense, rolling out the infrastructure services is, is relatively easier because of the geographical the size. Um, so this one shows Singapore's, Singapore citizens' habits. Um, on mon mobile platforms. And um, the takeaway that we have from here is that the um, curation is uh, pretty important when we choose to design services for the public. Um, what we choose, how we put it across, and how we deliver it. And one of the things we're discovering in our experience for government services is that video is becoming an increasingly um, important platform in reaching out to many, many demographics. Again, we find that important for us because um, we have a variety of races in Singapore, people who are ethnic Chinese, ethnic Malay, ethnic Indian, as well as people who come from different parts of, of Europe and other parts of the world. Uh, many languages are spoken, so video um, has been a huge uh, success for us in delivering uh, information about e-government services and also about connecting and promoting citizen engagement because a uh, picture spells out a thousand words and with video we're also able to provide subtitling in 
in uh, somebody's own language. So that, that's an important consideration also when we build the Wi-Fi infrastructure in libraries and public spaces. Because as the speakers were saying just now, it's, there is that need to cater for the bandwidth. So now if I can move on to some initiatives that are done both done by the library at a government level. And just now somebody asked a question about um, what is digital citizenship? And um, one of the things that we are doing through, through the library is information literacy. I think information literacy is particularly important in Singapore's environment where everybody is connected, everybody is online, we're all like children in a candy shop, you know, um, information is provided so freely. How do you make sense of, of all of this? And one of the big success we've had is the promotion of information literacy through social media networks. Um, we found, we tried to do classes, but uh, classes are fairly limiting in the sense that you can only reach the people who come to you. And the question we ask ourselves is how do we reach those who may not come to us? Um, and social media was identified. Um, simple taglines, uh, like Ellen, we have, a, we have a tagline and it's called sure. It's just a simple tagline of be sure to ask yourself the question of whether um, the source is reliable, whether we are able to understand the context, and to do more research and to evaluate the, the veracity of whatever is put across over the internet. So uh, that has been a particularly big, uh, big national campaign done by the National Library Board uh, to promote information literacy. And um, one of the reasons why it's particularly important also is not just to reach those who might not come to us, but because um, many over the internet, our people are also getting many different opinions on all sorts of issues. And it's, um, it's important to give that platform for people to, to be sure, as we called it. One particular area that we had to focus on was our seniors. And we had surveys done that um, particularly the older generation of Singapore above the age of 60 and 65, many of whom came to Singapore as migrants and may have had less education. Um, they were easily tricked by scams and easily fooled by um, promises made over the internet. So that was an area that we, we focused on with considerable success. This area is on uh, citizen engagement through um, what we call our memory project, which was uh, something that we've run over five years to foster a memory movement in Singapore. Um, why, why is this important? I think uh, it comes back to a bit of the discussion just now, we needed to have the citizen conversation. You know, um, what does it mean to be a citizen of a country? And it was particularly important for Singapore because as a small country and, and increasing cosmopolitan working adults and school children, we found that many of our citizenry uh, please don't laugh. They can name, you know, because of the internet, they can name the ancient kings of Korea, but they might not be able to name the, na the na Singapore's own pioneers or literary writers, or they might know the policies of Barack Obama really well, you know, because it's prevalent over the internet, but less familiar with our own uh, local policies because, you know, it doesn't have that kind of, of traction. And there's a need also for the memory project to... Um, get our citizens sh to share in our own country's achievements and developments and the tales of our own heritage. And, and that was one of the reasons why we embarked on this. And it's also carried out over social media. Again, we, you will find that uh, as a country, we use social media a lot because our statistics show that many people 
are on social media. We use Facebook for the older demographic and Twitter for the younger demographic. Because increasingly, our statistics also tell us that school children have moved away from Facebook and into, into Twitter. So um, that's, one of the, that's one of the things that we are doing for citizen engagement. Then the next slide is about citizen participation. And I know there was a question asked just now about whether uh, eGov is top down or whether the citizen um, is involved and is somebody talking to citizens about it. Um, yes, this in, in Singap Singapore's experience over many years has been top down, but in recent years, we've had a lot of initiatives where we want to be bottom up. And these are some of the examples there where some of our biggest, um, I guess, eGov initiatives have been through what we call hackathons, which is a way of getting citizens to come and co-create solutions and to share what are the problems of, of government. Um, for instance, it's through conversations like these on what citizens want of government that we know the, the areas that when we build apps, we are seeking to build applications now on where you get a bus where you can get a seat. You know, simple things like transport patterns matter to citizens. So a lot of energy has been focused there. Um, a lot of energy has been focused on applications for learning, for lifelong learning, skills future. We call it skills future and lifelong learning um, because this again comes from conversations and platforms where citizens tell government what, um, what we should be focusing on. The Citizen Archivist Project was really um, a crowdsourcing project uh, embarked on by the National Archives of Singapore, and that's really to transcribe um, pages uh, and to allow them to be searchable online. Now, um, transcribing of pages is something that has been done um, in other libraries and archives, but one of the areas that we want to move into after getting feedback from citizens is the transcription and translation of um, oral histories and, and other collections that are not in English or not in a language that the majority of the population can understand. And we've been crowdsourced, we're embarking on crowdsourcing projects for that. So, so this one, this slide is really just to share that uh, we've been doing a lot of citizen participation through crowdsourcing efforts whether um, it's online or people meet. I think uh, the next few slides are really some of the areas that the government has focused on with regard to digital inclusion. And senior citizens have been an area that uh, we focused on a lot, um, primarily because we have pioneers in Singapore that are less literate because they are either migrants or they have come from families that did not allow them to uh, have a full education when they were younger. So we focused a lot on this area and we have found from our surveys that it has borne a lot of fruit because many seniors, many of those that we have uh, reached out to have taken to electronic reading in a, a big way. In other words, e-books and e-newspapers, which are being rolled out through our uh, public libraries, we are rolling out e-newspapers, e-magazines, and e-books have particularly high traction with seniors, with people above the age of 65, because, uh, for various reasons, because you're able to increase the font and that has been a, a new discovery. For many of them, many of them may have stopped reading, but the fact that you can increase the font size brings them back. For those of them who maybe do not understand English so well, uh, we've been able to put in place audio applications that allow them to listen. You know? So 
um, then there is a voice that translates into the language that they are familiar with and they can listen in that way. Um, so we, we would, interestingly, we did not expect this when we started out, but we did not expect that our e-newspapers, e-magazines and e-books, in addition to having traction with busy working adults, actually have tremendously high traction with, with our seniors. Um, the other area that uh, has been a surprise to us and a tremendous learning point is that it builds a huge amount of community engagement when we get students, uh, young students, to actually teach the seniors uh, how to access digital devices and mobile applications. So many of our uh, classes today are also taught by by students as young as 16 to 18 to somebody who may be old enough to be his or her grandmother. But um, that has been very helpful in building intergenerational bonds as well. Um, the other area um, that our government has focused a great deal on and the library contributes also is on this whole issue of digital natives. Um, we usually assume that young people are familiar with digital devices and internet because they grew up with it. But I think our experience and surveys tell us that many of them are also equally lost and usually they're looking for, for guidance. They're usually looking for a teacher and a guide um, in, in many areas. And um, the library has been seen as uh, and library and librarians have been seen as people who are guides particularly to the young. And for the National Library Board, we run programs to schools, all schools in Singapore, and our role has been to teach uh, youth the way to navigate the internet, not how to go about it, but which are the important sources which are the trustworthy sources and which are the ways you can exercise your you know, digital citizenship in balanced and um, considered ways. And I think that has been very helpful as well to young people. Because part of our challenge in Singapore has been how to get young people interested in Singapore when there's the rest of the world to be interested in and also how to shake young people out of apathy uh, where they feel that they have seen this and done that and you know, there's nothing more that you can interest them in. So those have been the areas we've been working on. In addition, we, we introduce a great deal of technological laboratories in our libraries for young people to, to go and make use of as collaborative spaces and also where they can teach older people how to navigate the internet. I think um, the next couple of slides is really about um, some of the things our government has been doing. And as we discussed just now in the presentations, um, it's about making trustworthy com content available online. Uh, we have a big digitization project going. We learned a great deal from the New Zealand Library about digitization and preservation. Um, and that's the first step to making things available. Um, and I, I think the other area under this category is how we link library information to the rest of government information. I think that has been, that, that has been and is an ongoing effort for us. Because library information is not just in the library domain, but how true uh, areas that librarians can offer, like link data, uh, meta tagging using link data. We can make it available to somebody who is searching on trade and industry information in Singapore or even tourism information. And I think we are doing a great deal on that as well. For the way forward, um, just some simple uh, areas that are part of the national plan and library plan for the way forward. Um, in terms of community engagement, digital volunteerism is for us the next phase in advocacy and volunteerism. Uh, currently, 
we feel we haven't explored enough the opportunities for people to volunteer online through using, um, I guess, video conferencing options, through um, perhaps having busy corporate executives mentor a group of less well-off children or young people um, from his office, you know, through video conferencing technologies. I think that's one of the areas that we want to, to do. Or how do we reach um, people who are less mobile and who are homebound? And again, the fact that you can reach them digitally uh, allows you to check in on your less homebound and also to share um, information with them. And that's, that's important to us. Um, the, the second area is on promoting government policies through digital library platforms. Uh, this, this part is not just about current policies, but because the whole area of web archiving is going to be something important for the National Library Board. Um, we are combining uh, web archiving of government, government websites with the historical policies of the past. So we have a big initiative going to digitize government policies from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, um, and putting it together with our web archiving of government websites today so that people can have a holistic historical view of the development of government policies. And that's also to help um, a digital citizen uh, have a full understanding of the context. And finally, geospatial and data analytics in, in government has been a particularly uh, important area, partly driven by the fact that most citizens are on mobile platforms. Increasingly, more and more uh, formulas are being written so that government data can be visualized easily by the citizen. Um, if you have time, you may want to look at an application issued by the Singapore Department of Statistics called SingStat. And that's an effort, you can download their app, and that's an effort to put trade data, education data in ways that are easily visualized so that a citizen can, can understand. Geospatial too has been very important for us in designing services for citizens, and that could be things as simple as um, you know, allowing citizens to be able to see when the next bus is coming and whether before you board it, if it is packed, and if that's the case, you might want to take the rail instead of the bus. So it helps on individual decisions like that, but it also helps when it comes to government planning, where to, to locate a library and um, where, whether that library, if you locate it in a certain place, has the largest number of um, uh, people who can walk to that library uh, easily. So uh, these are just some of the things that um, I would like to share on what we'll be doing in Singapore and happy to take, com take questions later. Thank you very much.